here that they aim for no, in some cases, form of recreational marijuana. And I don't know, maybe that's Miss Galloway. Go ahead, Reed. Thank you, Councilman Mays. So very briefly, as Councilman Mays addressed, um, since the proposed code 1296 uh, failed, staff for legal and for planning and zoning have worked hard on prepare, preparing an emergency option uh, that could nonetheless be passed prior to November 1st, which is effectively the deadline for the city to have an ordinance on the books for recreational marijuana. We have drafted two distinct options that are before this body now. Uh, so first, I want to discuss the emergency aspect because that's common to both. Um, so both options include a statement explaining the rationale for the emergency ordinance, which is required under the charter, which is that the state of Michigan will grant a license to any applicant in the absence of the city ordinance restricting or prohibiting that location, so long as it's not within an area zoned exclusively for residential use and within a thousand feet of a school for kindergarten or grades one through 12. And that's it, that's set forth in the, in MRTMA, the Michigan, uh, the recreational law. So Reed, do you have copies of that for us just so that we can see where you're pulling at from the state of Michigan's law books? Yes, I, I, will, I will hand that out. Um, I, I do not expect any of you to have it uh, still, but if you recall when I handed out highlighted code uh, when we were discussing the last iteration, we didn't actually get to discuss it, but I had a handout with highlights and that, that was those sections. But so my point is, they're not here right now, but I will get them. Okay, Reed, can, can you just tell me which one which one is which? Yes. Because I just have two that. Correct, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I just okay. want to talk about what's in both, and then I'll talk about it. Okay. okay. So, uh, because those are the only locational restrictions, uh, it's our position, I mean, in the absence of an ordinance, marijuana establishments could thus arise in areas directly adjacent to residences, free schools, parks, and places of worship, despite the fact that under the city's medical ordinance, those uses are not allowed to be adjacent to each other because it requires an ordinance on the books that applies to recreation marijuana. So this result, combined with the immediate necessity of an ordinance by November 1st, would constitute an emergency affecting the welfare and property of the residents of the city of Flint for the purposes of the charter section 3307 allowing an emergency ordinance for 60 days. Uh, so both ordinances include that section as well as a statement of intention that the city will work on kind of in the 60 day period a more permanent ordinance to allow the recreational license types. Um, now we get into the two different ordinances. One is the emergency 60 day opt in as Councilman Mays was describing. So we are limited by our inability to change the zoning code uh, because under the Zoning Enabling Act you have to have a public hearing with, with, with the Planning Commission before you can bring change to the zoning code to this body. You can't do that in such a uh, short time frame. Um, but we can nonetheless piggyback on the zoning code under the medical marijuana ordinance and allow for the related recreational licenses, growing, processing, and retail slash provisioning, uh, and apply those standards under this draft opt-in. Uh, so the, the, the areas where marijuana is allowed would remain the same under this proposed uh, opt-in ordinance. The applications would be taken and evaluated in the same manner, subject to the same criteria as outlined in 50-1. A3, the medical opt-in ordinance. Uh, the only difference is the license cap, as identified in that section, but not inherently related to zoning, are would be eliminated for recreational medical marijuana establishments. And the, the view that we as staff have taken is that when we said you have a 45 day window to get your provisioning center application into the city and we're only gonna do X number, do you think that that actually increased demand for people to apply for these license types because it was now or never? If you compare the growing processing license types that we have no cap on and have allowed people to apply at any time, they have come in one here, one there. Mm -hmm. So I think we actually, through the rubric process and the limit on the licenses, and have in a sense kind of, when you take your thumb on the end of the hose and you get a lot more pressure. We've artificially increased uh, demand because we restricted supply. I don't think we have, we had 19 applicants. Some of the applications I think were just kind of gotten in, we gave it under the deadline. I don't think necessarily that all of them would want to go through the planning commission still, but we would we would remove the le the cap because I don't see a scenario where we allow the recreational licenses in uh, without that cap, without running into serious issues with the medical cap. So that is an, an, a necessary update that we added there. Uh, but nonetheless, the city uh, recognizes the efforts and commitments made in the rubric scoring process and people that have gone through that lengthy ordeal, many of whom are still in line, we are moving them through the planning commission now. In recognition of those efforts and uh, commitments, the city would exhaust the provisioning center list 
before it would bring other retail or provisioning center applications to the planning commission. So you could, we could still take the application at any time. You'd have to get in line, so to speak, to just get your hearing before the planning commission. So that's the opt-in. It's good for 60 days. We would immediately start working on a more permanent ordinance. The opt-out is much simpler. It's a 60-day opt-out. It does not have the exception for uh, the medical facilities to get their recreational license immediately like the old draft did. Some of the, a lot of the public comment at the last hearing was about the perception of fairness for people being able to um, get their recreational license and market share, so to speak, earlier than others. Um, and and I, I understand that perspective. Um, and since it's just for 60 days, it's just an opt out of all recreational licenses while we can get an ordinance put together. That's still a narrow window, but I think we can do it, including with satisfaction of the planning commission. And we're limited by 60 days for an emergency ordinance. Uh, but this would be a uniform opt out of all licenses for recreational marijuana. Let me be very clear that we don't have the ability to stop people from using or possessing it. And so I just don't, I just don't want that to be reported that the city is making that uh, when, when we say we're opting out entirely. We don't have that at all. But nonetheless, the licenses, it would be a total opt out. So the Council and Galloway, to answer your question, the, what should have been, I believe, the second in the pile is the temporary prohibition. That's just a uniform opt out. And then the emergency 60 day opt in is, is the first one I described. So just to see the difference, read. Um, yes. They, um, I don't know how to tell the difference with them. So if yep. you could tell me, yep. if you could just write like opt out and opt in. Oh, we're, we're So temporary prohibition. I'll just write out on your copy. Oh, okay. I didn't know. The it's it's kind of tucked in. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. M Mr. Winfrey. So, so, so just for clarity. Yes. So then the opt out would She's be the, 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 set, the word I think they're using them interchangeably, prohibition. Yes. Okay. Right. For 60 days, just for us to get a permanent. Uh, and for, for context, and what's referenced in the statement for the emergency circumstances, if you look uh, attach your handouts and, and the large copy that planning <laughs> provided, every green parcel on the city, on that city map, would be eligible under the state law for someone to get a marijuana license uh, in the absence of an ordinance. Did anyone have that question? Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Is, it, is it possible to get the open map as well for with the current zoning that we have for this? Yeah, so, so the, like one the, to go with this, it's like it says with the ordinance that we have? The current medical map. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. can we get that? Other, we get no it? problem. Uh, and then uh, other than that, I mean, uh, Thanks for getting distracted so quickly with that, with that time frame. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Yeah. Um, Reed, I knew you could draft an ordinance, and that's why I say fail the one and then get to work on another. 60 days, though, but you still got a lot of work to do. That's right. Not a lot, but when you start dealing with zoning, now you got time frames, public hearing and planning commission. So. I told them at the last meeting, the only way out now is an emergency ordinance. Um, it's kind of political. When you sit in these seats and the people of the city of Flint, Genesee County, and the state of Michigan vote in favor of something, I'm not going to be the one to vote contrary. When you see Burton, Mount Morris Township on either side of us, where in some cases you can walk across the street and get uh, marijuana and come back and Flint can't stop you from smoking. It don't make sense not to get revenue <clears throat> for this city as it relates to something. Some people think I drink alcohol. I don't. You can't really find it in my house regularly. I've drunk it when I go out. but. People buying it regularly. Some people on this council might not drink, but they buying it. Some people might not smoke. I smoke cigarettes, but it's selling here. It's the same type of thing, but we sitting in 2019, and I can see them sitting in prohibition, lawmakers. So that's where we at. We lawmakers. The people done voted. The people done voted, and you don't have to uphold it. You can say, I don't agree with anything that people vote for, and I vote no. You have that right. I'm just talking about me when I look at this thing. So I'll see if we get six votes 
on the opt in. You've done a good job, um, Reed. And for those who voted the opt out last time, that would have been you, Mr. Garrett. Do you understand that it was kind of an opt out and an opt in? So when you voted the opt out, you understood that that had language where they could sell at the medical place. So for all of those who was voting opt out, they were really voting to allow sales at the places that um, already sell medical. So now the legal department then went through great lengths to come up with something that fits the opt-in. And that's what the perception was. This was a perception. Everywhere I went, they was asking me, man, why that council say we can't have weed in Flint? Why they say we can't have marijuana in Flint? I say, because that's them. I say, but we blocked it. And so we're going to try to see if we can send the right message. Flint is going to have recreational marijuana. The only question is, is Flint going to capitalize on some of the money? Or is we going to opt out and can't distribute and sell? This is a good start, the opt-in. And then when we do that within 60 days, I'm going to continue to work with legal. I'm going to continue to go to planning commission meetings and planning commission can come here just like Mr. Wesley and that ninth ward lady did if they continue to choose. That's how you work together as a city. Reed, I'm proud that you got this together. And um, these ordinances will show up, what, on our agenda Monday? Do we don't have to move them from council to what they'll show up in special affairs? You have to move. No, you'd have to move them. In order for them. Okay, so I would move both the opt-in and the opt-out ordinance um, to special affairs. There's a motion to move that to special affairs, Mr. Davis. I second. I moved and seconded. Okay. Okay. Why would to the council? There's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving it to special affairs, say aye. 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 Those that oppose, <clears throat> any abstention moves to special affairs. So now we are on resolution number 190393. We, I hope the rest of council received this um, referral response about the uh, cities of comparable size policies for acquired homes. Did everyone receive this? Okay, I'm not. I just got this today. I've not had an opportunity to read it. Um, I haven't received. I would like to move that one nine zero three nine three one nine zero three nine four nine five nine six nine seven nine eight. Uh, be moved back to next committee. Be postponed to next committee. There's a motion on the floor to postpone these to the next committee. Is there a second? Awesome. Mr. Griggs has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Yeah, we finally got Jefferson School voted on after four years. And we still will be working on some nuances in that. I talked to Pastor Audrey or whatever. Now, Ms. Fields, in this uncrowded, what you call it, I'm going to call it an uncrowded, um, committee meeting agenda for finance. And since she want to move them all together, I'm going to separate 190394, 190395. I'm going to separate 190396, and I'm going to separate 190397. And I'm going to separate 190393. I don't believe you can separate on a motion. <laughs> and so I need, I, I, I need to, I don't, I, I don't know. So my question becomes, How you you ready, you? Mr. Mays, I want you to refrain. Point of information. What's your point of information? Will you say loud and clear that you don't know you I can absolutely separate? Am, and no, you've been Mr. here since how long? Since 2013. Oh, okay. My question becomes, you guys, with his separation, normally when we're on the floor, you can't separate every single item because then you automatically eliminate the motion that's on the floor. 
If she makes a motion to postpone and he separates each and every one of them, he has taken away her opportunity to make a motion instead of letting it die or pass. You, you're looking like you don't understand what I'm saying. Well, you're looking at me like that. I'm just trying to. You don't know what I'm looking, looking at. at. Miss Winfrey, sorry. Oh, I don't tell what I'm saying. You, and you need to change your tone. Well, I, I'm, I didn't have a tone any kind of way. I'm, your tone is very condescending tonight. It started off initially point of when order. it's not point of order. So my point Ms. is, Ms. Winfrey Carter does not have the floor. Right, you guys, I'm just asking. You do have the opportunity to separate, but never during a motion of moving something do we separate every single item, which means, means that technically the motion is no longer a motion. Does that make sense, Mr. President? I understand what you're saying. But, uh, Madam Chair, I don't think that we, we would have no. a, when we, when we, when we, when we do the motion and then the separation, let's say that there are six items. There's never been a prohibition on how many we could. Right. could. Right. So I'm saying if, if I wanted to separate, if, if, if somebody made a motion to move all of these and I really wanted to talk about all of them, but because we haven't done it before. We have. Well, I think we have as well. I don't think there's an issue with, with separating them all, even if it, it, I know it cancels it out. So do you get to cancel her motion? No, if I point of order, point of order, point of order. I didn't separate right. one, nine, zero, oh, three, nine, three. I didn't, I didn't but, 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 you just I, I think that he can if he wants to. Thank you, Mr. Chief. You should be chair if you're still learning. It calls on me. Put somebody in there who already know. I'm really the chair. Well, then be the chair. You want to be no, in the chair? Yeah, you want to give it up, resign like Kate. That's how I got it. Resign, go ahead. So we can get these yeah. meetings there. You resign. Stop talking. Did you say that? You want to resign? I didn't say that. I do think you were talking. It was made a motion that when you make a master resolution, you can separate. However, this isn't a master resolution. I. I don't see a problem with separating them personally because I think we do separate the master resolution. We do. However, I just I, I don't see the so, 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 so now there's a separation of everything except the first one. So there's a motion on Mr. Mays, one second, please. So right now there's a motion on the floor only to postpone one nine zero three nine three. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I got discussion on 190393. Mm -hmm. okay. 190393 is a land bank property for 1710 West Home. Nice brick house. Nice family. I recently met them during this process, and they done called me um, two, three times, Marie. Mm -hmm. Me and Mill House and Lynette Phillips went by there. I done asked every council person to knock on their door if they choose. I'm gonna fight to get these people their property. And I don't care if Ms. Fields, who voted no, never. Anyway, does anybody else have Oh, and just so you know, um, Mr. Um, Woodson, I did ask about that um, change to the workers' compensation, and according to Ms. Lewis, um, there is a, it's based on salaries, and so it was an estimate at the beginning, and then when there was actually a confirmation of how much it was, that's where the additional nineteen thousand was recognized. So I just want you to know I did ask that question. So we are on our next item, which is a brief discussion to this council about the audit. So President Winfrey and I had the opportunity to meet with the office audit, auditors and they shared that they began last week. They are working on the audit. There are some things that they are waiting to receive. There is one deadline date of um, the 31st that they're hoping to get the information that they need. I know that there were some um, questions about different scopes of the audit. As you know, there's gonna be the single audit for the grants that are under a certain dollar amount. Um, and so anything outside of that, meaning um, P card or anything else, would be a special audit that would include additional dollars. And so um, if you have any questions that you want to um, direct to the auditors um, in an effort to show uh, a, 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 high, a respect for the auditors, 
um, it should go through President Winfrey or myself as finance chair. But I prefer that you send it to President Winfrey so that they're hearing from one person, but everybody has the opportunity um, to ask any questions. And so um, they're confident that they can get the um, audit done. They're hoping by Christmas. There is some things that they need from um, those in the finance department and the different areas that are being audited, um, but they are working diligently with those departments. And so I just wanted to let you guys know that um, the auditors have started. Well, so remember, Ms. Ma what is your point of view? You ain't technically really the finance chair. I, I am. No, you're not. Thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Fields? <laughs> in order to do an audit, we have to have closed the books from the previous year um, through you to Mr. Branch. The point of order. Point of order. What's your point of order? This was voted on for you to give a brief explanation. Yes, That's it. Thank you, sir. So, um, Ms. Fields, you are, you are now referral. at your referral. Well, I believe I am still allowed to ask questions, Madam Chair. Even though Mr. Mays doesn't want these questions asked, point of order. that's part of the point of order. Is she appealing your ruling or arguing? Point of order. She sounds like she's arguing your ruling. Will you move her and call her out order for arguing and not getting on with the referral? Um, Ms. Fields, we didn't break down what that looked like, and so if we could just stick to what we said line by line, if you could just do your referral, and we'll talk about it under new business. How right. is that? Okay, I'll you, you I appreciate that. Well, so one referral sure. is to Mr. Mr. Branch. Stop talking, Mr. Point May. Of order. You are point out of order. order. Point of order. What is your point of order? Don't discriminate against the black. Let me finish my point. You're discriminating against the black councilman on the north side, but you won't check her and warn her because our rules say after one warning you remove her. You tried to remove me because I'm black and you female, but when it comes to white, females, you got a different standard of policing. Yeah. And that's my point of order. Mr. You, May, will, you, will you treat us the Mr. same? May, will you treat us the I same you, and quit Mays. discriminating? Mr. Mays, I am. The difference is when you were doing your point of order and you said something, Miss Fields remained silent as you spoke. The difference is once she said, I will do as you requested and begin to speak on her referral, you continue to talk. And according to our rules, you are supposed to be silent. Point of order, respond. point of order. Oh. The, the, a point of order is you're going you to say I will write and move on. Not you're going to point and talk to me like a kid. You out of you order now. Right. now if you continue I'm to talk to me like a kid, and you're supposed to say proceed or deny. It ain't no stick in your fang and talk. Mr. Mays, that, that ain't how it works. A point of order is on what she talking about, not me. And if you can't handle the chair and you want to get into these long diatribes, you're out of order again. Now, treat them like you treat the black man. Mr. Quit trying to get the white folks vote to Stop try to be president. Talking, Mr. Mays. Don't discriminate. Stop talking. Then you are out of order. You're you disrupting you the You're out of order for not handling it. I right. already did. Well, continue and you and handle listen. it right. I listen well and I observe well. You're discriminatory. You know what? Where's the disorderly conduct? Because now you are disorderly. And so, Mr. Mays, you I'm are done. It. You can appeal. She's she already done. Well, so you should stop talking. You should check them. Both. Thank you, Miss Fields. Would you please, Mr. Mays, and I just want you to stop talking. Otherwise, you are going to have the last warning, and that's it. So, Miss Fields, if you would please, do, Mr. Mays, that's your last warning. Point of order. You are. What's your point, point of order? Have, have you warned her? her I first? haven't needed to. Yes, you did. I did. I didn't need to. Go ahead, Ms. Fields. I have a referral to Mr. Branch and mm -hmm. Finance. I'd like to know if the books have been closed in order for the auditors to proceed. I have a second referral. I would like to... Point of order. We voted on oh, a referral. Board. That's what she said. She, she didn't say she had referral. Point of order. Point of order. What's your point of order? What? She said she had a referral. She didn't say she had a list of referrals. I know her. She's made that referral. Now she's going to a second. You gonna allow multiple referrals? That ain't what we told it on. Um. So so yeah, I'm gonna let her do one more. Thank you, Miss Fields. 
Well, I actually have two more. And oh, and point I didn't tell, she didn't say I'm That's my right. point. Which so I, so I would peel, I'll peel the ruling of the chair. There's no ruling on mine. You said you were going to let her proceed with these referrals. So you said you had a referral. Here. I got a no, point. He appealed. So he appealed. The, I don't know what decision he appealed. Just so you guys know. Um, he's appealing the decision of the chair. To he's let her do multiple referrals like we know she did. So um, is there a second? Yeah, I don't think okay. it's, 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 it's been moved and seconded. And so I don't know um, if if if, the, if it was agreed on that she would make one referral. She asked if she could make referrals. So I don't know if that means referrals or referrals. So. Um, Mr. Mayor yeah, and then Mr. Garrett. Madam Chair, let me tell you. Yes, sir. It might have passed if she had said she had multiple referrals. But I went through an exercise because I know my colleagues. I knew when she wanted to new, move new, new business, it was going to probably be a bunch of stuff dealing with the administration that she liked to do and then leave. I said keep it at the end. Now you said a referral we voted on a referral she categorized that as a referral now we get here she's telling you it's multiple i don't even want to hear them yet she can sit here just like any other council person wait till we get to that part of the agenda and make multiple referrals to the cows come on i know these people you try to act like you don't know them and that they are all in order and so forth and so on. So I'll be voting no on your ruling and let her proceed. If you mean well, you'll vote no too because she misled you, misled us. We voted on one referral. I made it a point to keep all that to new business and I asked specifically, a referral? That's what it was. It wasn't multiple referrals because if, if that's the case, <laughs> It wouldn't, I wouldn't even vote it for. Now she done sprung on you as more than one, and we should vote this down. She can stay in attendance just like we all do. And then when we get to that agenda, referral after referral. She done made the one referral. That's what we voted on. Thought it was something quick. She's telling you it ain't just another one. It's some more. I'll be voting no. And, and you grooving to let her proceed. She want to do that at the first and meeting and leave. Just do all of stuff and leave. Let her make them sit here. Mr. Beer? Yeah, just in regards to knowing how Ms. Steele's like the pros, I know typically when she does it, she just kind of goes down the list. So that's why I assume when you get an approval to a referral, I mean, uh, that's just the way it's done. And it's not, you call it a discussion, it's a simple referral to the department and not leave to the board. Point of information. Point of information. Oh, what's your point of view? Did you hear her on the record say, a oh, referral? I wasn't listening. Okay, I was. Thank I you, just, sir. I, just heard, I know the referral, when I hear her say referral, I know that's multiple times. Just like three yeah, years ago. You know that. So, that's all I got to say. So, Ms. Steele, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Steele. The referrals I would like to make would have been done and over with and we'd be moving on to other business. But, Mr. Mays, please. Mr. You're Mays. being disruptive. Is doing his darndest to keep me from speaking at all with only points of order, only points of information, uh, you know, objecting to everything under the sun, just outright interrupting me, ignoring the chair, ignoring all of our council rules. Um, I just want to point out that this all would be over with if I had just been allowed to make my referral. Is there any further discussion on the um, decision? Any further um, the chair, I, I can't say if she said referrals or referral, and so it's not my right. It's not my, and so um, so him appealing the chair. I, I thought that referrals meant referrals. So just so you know, it wasn't my decision. So he's not technically um, appealing me. He's a, he's appealing what we all think we heard. So just for the record, point of information. Are you sure we all think we heard multiple? It's not, my ruling. What you it's not my ruling is what I'm saying. So thank you, so Mr. Mays. You're done, I Mr. Heard. Mays. I heard. I'm just getting so a point of information. All in favor of the chair's ruling say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those that oppose, Me. his fails, Ms. Fields, continue with your point ruling. Of order. What's your point of order? A show of hands. I want to All in favor five. of the chair's ruling say aye. Aye. Those that oppose, thank you. So, Ms. Fields, if you could please continue and then we can move forward. Okay. Um, I would like to ask the city attorney's office for an executive session at the next special affairs 
to discuss the racial discrimination point of order. sexual harassment. Point of order. What's your point of order? That's order? not a referral. That's a request for action. That's fine. So, so she's out of order. You can call it a referral. That, that's a point of order. That's a Mr. request Mr. for Mayor, action. Now, if you tell order? her to proceed <laughs> with action, I'm going to appeal the ruling. What is an action, you guys? There is an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. No, I said I will. I didn't appeal it. I say you rule her out of order for trying to do action. I appeal the ruling of the chair. So I don't know the difference. There's an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor. Is there a second? Is there an appeal of the decision of the chair on the floor? Is there a second? Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. So Mr. Mays is trying to differentiate whether it's a referral or a request. It's the same thing. She has a right. It's her time. And so she's given enough time for that to be done. It seems appropriate to me. And so Mr. Mays has a different view of it. Is there any other discussion on that? Mr. Garrett. Yeah. yeah, I would say uh, we're referrals of uh, IT as a request for information to the department, and especially with executive sessions. The way I've always known it is that legal typically says they want to have an executive session. So I think it's a referral of order asking legal to do so. Mr. Um, Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I got an issue with it because it's politically motivated. That's why I have a big issue with it. We shouldn't be allowed to have political propaganda controlling this meeting or request, especially when you side in one way or the other. I don't know how to say it, but one way. When half of this body does uh, fundraise at a council person's house, then you come in here requesting information for another political figure, I got big pr uh, problems with it. All you want to gather is negative information and it needs to stop immediately and it should not be requested until after all of the, the election and stuff is over because it's for a political candidate. And I'm done. Madam Chair. Ms. Fields? I believe that 16, 17 city employees filing racial and sexual harassment. Racial point of order. What is your point of charges. order, Ms. Fields? What point is your of point order. of order? I don't think that she got to get into the content in order to discuss the difference between a referral and action. Right. But let her do it because I'm going to have a field day. Where's your point it. of order, Mr. I'll Mayor? I'll withdraw it. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Fields. If pending litigation could end up costing the city millions and millions of dollars, and hence one of the main duties of the city council is to um, provide fiduciary oversight. I think it's pretty important that we hear from our attorneys uh, what the city's legal position is on this litigation that has been filed. the information. Who is your point of She know have nothing been served over here to the city at this time, so what is she talking about? Or do I need to put more clarity to it? Thank you, Go ahead, um, Ms. Fields. I think I said what I wanted to say. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate Madam Chair, I listened to her and didn't even know if she's going to vote yes or no on her own appeal. I assume she'll be voting that she can keep going. This is race. She's white. The plaintiff is white. She support Neely. You support Neely. And some of us support we. So I knew at the beginning of this meeting she wanted to change the order because she see them cameras and want to talk about white folks being discriminated against. And she didn't call me racist it here. Briggs didn't call the mayor racist. He the one that Maurice talked about the fundraiser at his house. I wanted to make them stay here. I didn't want them to interrupt the resolutions and the action to be politically campaigning uh, on a white lawsuit against some black folks. That's what she do. You done let her sneak in multiple, and this ain't even a referral. A referral would have been simply a request for um, legal to do something. And that would have been to have maybe an executive session, but that's why I say it wasn't but one referral request. When I heard that one referral, all the multiples, you done let her hijack the agenda because you ruling illegally and wrong because you and her in the same bed politically. Y'all supporting and doing the same thing politically. Yes, you are. And so y'all want to use this, this platform to campaign. Here she done brought up a lawsuit with 17 white people saying it's going to cost the city millions of dollars and she don't even know that. 
She don't even know if it's going to pass summary judgment. She don't even know if it's going to be settled for $10. But she want to throw that out there because if some white folks can sue some black folks for racial discrimination. And she's making a big deal out of it. And you condoning it with illegal rulings to let her just sit here and hijack our meeting when we got business to do. And I know if the public don't know it, at the end, she gone. She be gone. Griggs be gone. He been staying a little lately, but she be gone. And evil words and be gone. They don't show up for the state of the city. They come in here every week trying to hijack the mayor and me. And I'm here to tell you, this is a black person that ain't studying them. And you condone in discrimination. You treat them nice and you want to throw me out. You treat them nice and they be way out of order. You be out of order. Who warns you? Who going to throw you out? So this is ridiculous. I'm not going to sit here and try to let her go through another referral that can be made under new business if she want to wait. We voted on one referral. The record will show it. I don't care what y'all do. Gara want to be president. You want to be president. Y'all kissing Kate Fields' butt in my mind politically to get a vote. Because when it comes to um, Jerry Winfrey Cotter, Maurice Davis, and Winfrey and myself, we might vote the same. You and Gara is going to decide if y'all vote with Kate Fields, Griggs, and Eva. And I want the whole city to watch. I don't try to get Kate Fields votes. I don't try. You try. Gara try. Then I'm going to make sure the city watch it just like they watch Scott Kincaid, Jackie Poplar, Carrie Nelson, and Juan Twes Davis. This has been tried before. Y'all ain't doing nothing up here slick and new. She probably knew about the lawsuit before it was filed. Swear in and after. What's the lady named Buxby? That's the same lady Reverend Shrimp talking about. It's some allegations and some nasty white folks talking about black folks. I'll be voting no on your ruling for her to proceed. We done voted on her one referral, not no multiples. Letting her hijack this mean just to talk about what she wants in the form of a referral. That's an action. That's an action. So she laughing. You can laugh, Miss Fields, but I got a loud mouth. You can run, but you can't hide. And I'm telling you, I don't bite my tongue when it comes to black, white, young, old Democrats, Republicans. This is a swing state state of Michigan. Trump won about 10,000. They right here in Flint. I'm not going to let nobody in Flint be misled by white folks, black folks, Woodson, or no folks. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to be loud in the voice. I'll be voting no on what you and Kate Fields are trying to do up here. Um, just for the record, um, Mr. Mayor, point of order. what is your point of order? Are you asking if any more discussion? That's what your job. You just spoke one. Mr. Ma I haven't. But I can You're supposed to speak at the beginning, well, don't you? If anybody else want to speak, I have everybody's name on the list. So I wanted to. Thank you, Mr. May. Are you satisfied? So nobody else want to speak. They didn't ask. And what we in? Point of information and order. What We're is this? I'm um, closing on your appeal for okay. her to proceed with her. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. May. So just just for um for the record, um, I'm going to start with what I said at the beginning of the appeal. Um, it is a request for information whether you see it as a referral or not. We've never in our council, I've been on since 13, never have I known that there was a difference or a separation. And so if, if that's only me. But um, for the record, Mr. Mayor, what is the point of I've information? I've been here since 213 and it is, it is a difference between a referral and a
So an executive session, in my opinion, I wasn't going to ask for one, but is appropriate. Point of information. Councilman May, is you that are a referral? Abusing? Point of information. Is that a referral? It, yes, yeah, it's way a request know for it. information. I Thank you, no sir. Referral. And so Mr. May is out of order and continues to be out of order. I am only one council person. And because we have no police presence, he refuses to be in order. And so that needs to be addressed too. And so just for the record, he lost his appeal when, when he said he didn't want Ms. Fields to continue. And now she has, and now he's appealing again. And so this is not my decision. This is a request for information for an executive session. You can see it as a uh, um, referral or not. And so that's why I think that it's appropriate. So with that none, with all that said I want to thank you guys all in favor of the ruling of the chair say aye aye, aye. those that oppose um. any abstentions and so it passes that's for the division of the house division of the house Division at a the house. Division at a house. Division at a house. Division at a house. All in favor of the ruling of the vote. chair say aye. 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 Those that oppose. So, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Fields, if you can please wrap up. I would like to make a referral for the last time to Mr. Branch. Through you to Mr. Branch. I want documentation that the 433000 that was taken out of the sewer and water fund to pay the AECOM invoice was paid back into the sewer and water fund. I want the documentation. So you have all of her referrals. You have a request for executive session and her three referrals, it sounds like, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So now we are on Mr. Mays' emergency marijuana ordinance. Yeah, Madam Chair. I'm going to have Reed, Reed, you, however you want to join us, can you come forward? Sure. Have you passed out both um, proposed ordinances? I have. And Reed, I want you to do it however way you want to do it and enlighten um, this council on what some of the things you, the planning commission, I've been privileged to have um, conversation with you. But before you start, I want this council to understand this. These are emergency ordinances. It takes six votes to enact. And I think we learned in your absence, Ms. Galloway, when folks dig in and try to do stuff their own way, Mr. Jerry, sometimes it fails four to four, just like these appeals. That's the beauty of something passing five or four to four. Right or wrong, these votes mean something. So I'm going to say to y'all, as you hear this and as we move through this, those same five folks who try to run together, Mr. Garrett, if you want to talk to Ms. Fields, I'll wait. If you want to pay attention, Ms. Galloway, if you want to high and harm and interrupt me and show an attitude, your demeanor is admissible. Ms. Galloway, uh, Ms. Fields and Mr. Guerra is admissible because you tried to remove me for twisting the Guerra in a meeting and you chairing Point and they of order to you, Mr. May. You are out of order. Please continue. You are speaking of something that has nothing to do with now. It so has a lot to Mr. do with now. When my colleague is talking and not listening, it has a lot to do with it. And when you tried to throw me out of a meeting for talking to a colleague, you don't want me to bring that up when you see the white folks do it. But when the black folks did it, you wanted to throw me out. So I want their attention. And I don't care if she leave or not. I want to say attention on this emergency ordinance. I didn't want them down there talking to each other because you tried to throw me out when I talked to a colleague and I had never seen that in 30 years. I'm used to your nasty discrimination. This is an emergency ordinance. It takes six votes to enact it. One of them going to deal with opting in and one of them going to deal with opting out. If neither one of them got the six votes, then the state is free to put them everywhere. For those people like um, yourself, Ms. Galloway, who don't... You're going to give a chance. I can't talk to these folks when you 
Because Galloway don't want to hear me anyway, Bree. Mr. May, please. Miss Galloway, I got the floor, right? I got the floor, right? And it's a, I requested, right? Do I interrupt you when you giving kids your special orders and certificates? I sit there and listen. I don't like to be treated differently by you, especially. My position is this. My position is this. Be very careful for those like you, Ms. Galloway, who believe that you don't want no weed or marijuana. It's here. The train and left the station. It's going to be in Burton. It's going to be in um, Mount Morris Township. My dividing line on Cloud Road. You can vote no in Flint and they can walk right across the street and get two ounces and come back in and smoke it. So, Ms. Galloway, you might not never vote yes. Point of order. Mr. Mays, I want you to stop using my name. Just talk to your colleagues and, and plead your case and call it a day. <laughs> you shouldn't have never said stop using your name because I'm going to use it more and more now that I don't want, that you don't want me to do it. You are a council person. You are an elected official. I can say your name. I can say Maurice Davis' name. I can say the mayor's name. I can say any elected official's name. And I want the public to know you don't want nobody to say your name. That's going to make me say your name three times. Miss Galloway, Miss Galloway, Miss Galloway. Mr. May, where our rules are silent, Robert's rules take precedence. And you are violating Robert's rules and you are not to call any of our names. You are supposed to speak specifically about an office and not our name. And you guys know that's in the rules. And so I'm asking you to just proceed. You're you wasting are our time. Your order. You're wasting you our time. You see you want an appeal? Not to you. Oh, well, I don't want you one of you. If you can say you, I can say Galloway, Galloway, Galloway. Council person Galloway. You barking up a wrong tree politically to tell me not to say your name. I'm going to say it more now than ever because I know you don't want to be singled out and pointed out. Yeah, you done made it clear how you want to vote on this legislation. And I'm telling you, six votes don't control it. And it ain't going to make me lose sleep if it ain't nothing in place. This is an emergency order. The deadline is November 1st. I don't care how you vote, Ms. Galloway. I'm just hipping you to, based upon the position, point of order. Why won't you warn yourself for talking when I got the flow? Warn yourself and throw your own self well, out. Ms. Galloway, as a chair, you, you can't abuse it. You're out of order. I'm saying to y'all, will you throw her out? The chair don't make you be able to interrupt people when they got the flow on a special order. You're abusing the chair because you don't like the contents of what this council person is saying. You even said, don't say nobody's name. That's the foolishest thing I ever heard in 30 years of council meeting. I'm going to say Jackie Poplar, I'm going to say Monica Galloway, Kerry Nelson, Santino Guerra, Herb Winfrey, I'm going to say Maurice Davis, and I'm going to say Griggs. I'm going to say whatever name I want. I call it freedom of speech. And you ain't going to tell me not to say your name. Can y'all believe that? She want to throw me out for saying her name. That's ridiculous. And so the point is this. He is a presenting. One is an opt-in and one is an opt-out. The opt-out field, it needs to fail. People done voted, the train and left the station. This is gonna be about six votes, one way or another. Or if it don't get to that threshold, guess what'll happen? The floodgates, in my opinion, are open because we won't have nothing in place because certain people done made it clear that they ain't for, no, in some cases, form of recreational marijuana. And I don't know, maybe that's Miss Galloway. Go ahead, Reed. Thank you, Councilman Mays. So very briefly, as Councilman Mays addressed, uh, since the proposed code 1296 uh, failed staff for legal and for planning and zoning have worked hard on prepare, preparing an emergency option uh, that could nonetheless be passed prior to November 1st, which is effectively the deadline for the city to have an ordinance on the books for recreational marijuana. So we have drafted two distinct options that are before the slide now. Uh, so first, I want to discuss the emergency aspect because that's common to both. 
Um, so both options include a statement explaining the rationale for the emergency ordinance, which is required under the charter, which is that the state of Michigan will grant a license to any applicant in the absence of the city ordinance restricting or prohibiting that location, so long as it's not within an area zoned exclusively for residential use and within a thousand feet of a school for kindergarten or grades one through 12. And that's it, that's set forth in the in Mertmont, uh, Michigan, uh, the recreational law. So Reed, do you have copies of that for us to, so that we can see where you're pulling that from the state of Michigan law book? Yes, I, I will I will hand that out. Um, I, I do not expect any of you to have it uh, still, but if you recall when I handed out highlighted code uh, when we were discussing the last iteration, we didn't actually get to discuss it, but I had a handout with highlights and that, that was those sections. But so my point is, they're not here right now, but I will get them. Okay, Bree, can, can you just tell me which one which one is which? Yes. Because I just have two that... Correct, I'm, 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 I'm getting that. I just okay. want to talk about what's involved, and then I'll talk about it. Okay. okay. So, uh, because those are the only locational restrictions, uh, it's our position, I mean, in the absence of an ordinance, marijuana establishments could thus arise in areas directly adjacent to residences, preschools, parks, and places of worship. Despite the fact that under the city's medical ordinance, those uses are not allowed to be adjacent to that. Because it requires an ordinance on the book that applies to recreation if you want. So this result, combined with the immediate necessity of an ordinance by November 1st, would constitute an emergency effect on the welfare and property of the residents of the city of Flint for the purposes of the charter section 3307 allowing an emergency order for 60 days. Uh, so both ordinances include that section as well as the statement of intention that the city will work on kind of in the 60 day period a more permanent ordinance to allow the recreational license type. Um, now we get into the two different ordinances. One is the emergency 60 day opt-in as Councilman Mays was describing. So we are limited by our inability to change the zoning code uh, because under the Zoning Enabling Act, you have to have a public hearing with, with, with the Planning Commission before you can bring a change to the zoning code to this body. You can't do that in such a uh, short time frame. Okay. Uh, but we can nonetheless piggyback on the zoning code under the Medical Marijuana Ordinance and allow for the related recreational licenses, growing, processing, and retail slash provision, uh, and apply those standards under this draft opt-in uh, so the, the the areas where marijuana is allowed would remain the same under this proposed uh, opt-in ordinance. Applications would be taken and evaluated in the same manner, subject to the same criteria as outlined in 50-183, the medical opt-in ordinance. Uh, the only difference is the license cap, as identified in that section, but not inherently related to zoning, are elim would be eliminated for recreational medical marijuana establishments. And the the view that we as staff have taken is that when we said you have a 45 day window to get your provisioning center application into the city and we're only gonna do X number. We think that that actually increased demand for people to apply for these license types because it was now or never. If you compare the grow and processing license types that we have no cap on and have allowed people to apply at any time, they have come in one here, one there. So I think we actually, through the rubric process and the limit on the licenses, and have in a sense kind of when you take your thumb on the end of the hose and you get a lot more pressure. We artificially increase uh, demand because we restrict the supply. I don't think we have, we had 19 applicants. Some of the applications I think were just kind of gotten in to get it under the deadline. I don't think necessarily that all of them would want to go through the planning commission still, but we would we would remove the, the cap because I don't see a scenario where we allow the recreational licenses in uh, without that cap, without running into serious issues with the medical cap. So that is an, an, a necessary update that we added there. Uh, but nonetheless, the city uh, recognizes the efforts and commitments made in the rubric scoring process with people that have gone through that lengthy ordeal, many of whom are still online. We are moving them through the planning commission now. In recognition of those efforts and uh, commitments, the city would exhaust the provisioning center list before it would bring other retail or provisioning center applications to the planning commission. You, we can still take the application at any time. You have to get in line, so to speak, to just get your hearing before the planning commission. So that's the uh, opt-in. It's good for 60 days. We would immediately start working on a more permanent ordinance. The opt-out is much simpler. It's a 60-day opt-out. It does not have the exception for uh, the medical facilities to get their recreational license immediately, like the old draft did. Some of the, a lot of the public comments at the last hearing was about the perception of fairness for people being able to. Um, get their recreational license and market share, so to speak, earlier than others. Um, and and I, I understand that perspective. 
um, and since it's just for 60 days, it's just an opt-out of all recreational licenses while we can get an ordinance put together. That's still a narrow window, but I think we can do it, including with that section of the Planning Commission, and we're limited by 60 days for an emergency ordinance. Uh, but this would be a uniform opt-out of all licenses for recreational marijuana. Let me be very clear that we don't have the ability to stop people from using or possessing it, and so I just don't, I just don't want that to be reported that the city is making that uh, when, when we say we're opting out entirely. We don't have that ability. But nonetheless, the licenses, it would be a total opt-out. So the Councilman Galloway, to answer your question, the, what should have been, I believe, the second in the pile is the temporary prohibition. That's just a uniform opt-out. And then the emergency 60-day opt-in is, is the first one I described. So just to see the difference, we um, yes. they, um, I don't know how to tell the difference with some stuff. Yep. You can tell me yep. if you could just write like opt out and opt in. Mm -hmm. Oh, where, where So temporary right? prohibition. I'll just write out on your copy. Oh, okay. I didn't know. It's, it's kind of tough. I understand. Thank you. So, Mr. Mr. Winston. So, so, so just for clarity. Yes. So then the opt out would be the, 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 the word that they're using and then the change would be prohibition. Yes. Okay. For 60 days, just for us to get a permit. Uh, and for, for context, and what's referenced in the statement for the emergency circumstances, if you look at uh, attach your handouts and, and the large copy that planning provided, every green parcel on the city, on that city map, would be eligible under the state law for someone to get a marijuana license uh, in the absolute order. Did anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Is it possible to get the map as well for with the current zoning that we have for them? Yeah, so. So only one to go with it, just like you said, with the ordinance that we have? The current medical map. Yeah. Yeah, can we get that? No problem. And then other than that, I mean, thanks for being distracted. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Reed, I knew you could draft the ordinance. And that's why I say fail to one and then get to work on another. 60 days though, but you still got a lot of work to do. That's right. Not a lot, but when you start dealing with zoning, now you got time frames, public hearing and planning commission. So I told them at the last meeting, the only way out now is an emergency ordinance. Um, it's kind of political. When you sit in these seats, and the people of the city of Flint, Genesee County, and the state of Michigan vote in favor of something, I'm not going to be the one to vote contrary. When you see Burton, Mount Morris Township on either side of us, where in some cases you can walk across the street and get uh, marijuana and come back and Flint can't stop you from smoking, it don't make sense not to get revenue <coughs> for this city as it relates to something. Some people think I drink alcohol. I don't. You can't really find it in my house regularly. I've drunk it when I go out. But people buy it regularly. Some people on this council might not drink, but they buy it. Some people might not smoke. I smoke cigarettes. But it's selling here. It's the same type of thing, but we sitting in 2019, and I can see them sitting in prohibition, lawmakers. So that's where we at, we lawmakers. The people done voted. The people done voted, and you don't have to uphold it. You can say, I don't agree with everything the people vote for, and I vote no. You have that right. I'm just talking about me when I look at this thing. So I'll see if we get six votes on the opt and you've done a good job, uh, Reed. And for those who voted the opt out last time, that would have been you, Mr. Guerra. Do you understand that it was kind of <laughs> an opt out and an opt in? So when you voted the opt out, you understood that that had language where they could sell at the medical place. So for all of those who was voting the opt out, they were really voting to allow sales at the places that I'm um, already sell medical. So now the legal department then went through great lengths to come up with something that fits the IP. And that's what the perception was. This was a perception. Everywhere I went, they was asking me, 
Man, why that council say we can't have weed in Flint? Why they say we can't have marijuana in Flint? I say, because that's them. I say, but we blocked it. And so we're going to try to see if we can send the right message. Flint is going to have recreational marijuana. The only question is, is Flint going to capitalize on some of the money? <coughs> or is we going to opt out and can't distribute and sell? This is a good start. The opt in. And then when we do that within 60 days, I'm going to continue to work with legal. I'm going to continue to go to planning commission meetings. And planning commission can come here just like Mr. Wesley and that ninth ward lady did if they continue to choose. That's how you work together as a city. Reed, I'm proud that you got this together. And um, these ordinances will show up, what, on our agenda Monday? Do we don't have to move them from council to what they'll show up in special affairs? Okay, so I would move both the opt-in and the opt-out ordinance um, to special affairs. There's a motion to move that to Mr. Davis. I second. Okay, I second. 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 I we, I hope the rest of council received this uh, referral response about the uh, cities of comparable size policies for acquired homes. Did everyone receive this? Okay, I'm not, I just got this today. I've not had an opportunity to read it. Um, I haven't received I would like to move that 190393, 
during a motion of moving something, do we separate every single item, which means, means that technically the motion is no longer a motion. Does that make sense, <laughs> Mr. President? I understand what you're saying. But, uh, Madam Chair, I don't think that we, we have a, when we, when we, when we, when we do a motion and then there's separation, let's say that there are six items. There's never been a prohibition on how many could have. Right. So I'm saying if, if I wanted to separate, if, if, if somebody made a motion to move all of these and I really wanted to talk about all of them, but because we haven't done it before, yeah. Well, I think you have as well. I don't think there's an issue with, with separating them all, even if it's, it, I know it's canceled without. So do you get to cancel her motion? No, or if I want to board, if board, if if board, if board. I didn't separate right. one, nine, zero, oh, three, nine, three. I didn't, I didn't. But, 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 because you just did I, 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 I think that you can if you want to. Thank you. You should be chair if you're still learning. It calls on me. Put somebody in there who already know. I'm really the chair. Well, then be the chair. You want to be in the Yeah, you want to give it up. Resign like Kate. That's what I got. Resign. Go ahead. So we can get these meetings done. You resign. Stop talking. Did she say like she wanted to resign? I didn't say that. I do think you were talking. It was made a better way to make a master resolution. You can separate. However, this isn't a master resolution. I don't see a problem separating them personally, but I think you can separate a master resolution. However, I <coughs> so, so now there's a separation of everything except the first one. So there's a motion on, Mr. May, one second please. So right now there's a motion on the floor only to postpone 190-393. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. I got discussion on 190393. Mm -hmm. okay. 190393 is a land bank property for 1710 West Home. Nice brick house. Nice family. I recently met them during this process, and they done called me um, two, three times, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Me and Mill House and Lynette Phillips went by that. I done asked every council person to knock on their door if they choose. I'm going to fight to get these people their property. And I don't care if Miss Fields, who voted no, never did it, and I don't care if Miss Galloway, who voted no on these people's property, don't give it to them. But I seen Rich and Gina and Carol McIntosh on Facebook yesterday doing a fine job encouraging people to look at these properties, look at these foreclosures. Now here you got council people Oh, we don't want foreclosures, uh, water liens on their property. People need their property. When it comes to getting property, I want y'all to look at who's fighting it. Miss Fields, Eva Worthing, Miss Galloway. It's a new project. The land bank got a vehicle to help folks get their property. And the Genesee County Treasurer got a second chance program where you can go over and make payments and keep your property. The city of Flint ain't got nothing for folk property. Here we are in about 10 or 20 trying to develop policy, have developed policy. Ms. Worthen don't even know we voted on a policy. She ain't here today. She kept saying, check the record. We need a policy in place. I'm saying, Lord have mercy. She don't know the majority of us done voted on a policy. Now here Miss Fields ain't talked about nothing. We in committee. She want to get them out of committee with no discussion. And I done mechanically showed up. It's going to be some discussion on each one of them. Let me say this. I'll be voting no to postpone 1710 West Home Street. And anybody who want to get people in here for lawsuits that was just recently filed but won't get the right people and make a referral to find out about this property. It's a political game. This been out here way longer than a lawsuit of seven or 12 or 17 white folks. But that's what she interested in, a lawsuit. I ain't a lawsuit, 17 white folks saying the blacks is racist. This been here, Miss Fields, make a referral on that are getting these folks their property. They black. Just, <laughs> you could have picked property for white folks in your war. Or black ones too. I don't bite my tongue when it comes to black, white, young, old Democrats and Republicans. 
because we in politics. You're going to have some Democrats and you're going to have some Republicans. I just happen to be a strong Democrat. So I'm going to vote no. If this don't get five votes, guess what happens? Then I'm going to put a motion to move it to council. Enough is enough. I'm going to talk about the same things I've talked about since these have come on. There is a price attached to these properties. The city of Flint has no policy about how we put a price or evaluation on these. It's not like it's 10% of SEB or something that has been arrived at. Basically, Mr. Milhouse, the attorney, was asked how this price was arrived at. He said, ask Mr. Mays, he said the price. I believe that uh, it is illegal for a city council person to vote pull out the properties in his ward for people who didn't pay their taxes, who would like to get their house back for far less than what their taxes would cost them, um, and then set a price on it and expect council to approve that. I think this is illegal, and I think it was found to be illegal. <coughs> and I haven't written up the complaint yet, but I am going to file a complaint with the AG's office if council does this, because I think there is extreme cronyism going on here. And I don't think this is fair to any of those people out there in the city who are paying their property taxes. It is not fair to say, uh, you don't have to pay them, you don't have to pay them because you're buddies of mine. But oh yeah, you have to pay them. So don't pay your taxes and I'll give it to you for a lot less than your taxes would be. And for those council people who sit there and argue about there's not enough money for blight, there's not enough money for police, well, that's where the money comes from, from property taxes. We don't even have an agreement or a policy that states that these people must uh, remain uh, current with their property taxes or, or lose the property if they don't pay the first years or up to five years following. I mean, this is has major flaws in it. I believe it's illegal, and I certainly am not going to vote for it. And the last thing I would like to say <coughs> is, Madam Chair, this is not your fault. You would you're, you're making a valiant effort, but um, every discussion, every dialogue, every point of order, every point of information leads to some racial reference, inference, um, derogatory statement from Mr. Mays, and um, if I have to leave these meetings, it's because I simply can't put up with that anymore. That is not acceptable. It's not acceptable to anyone, black or white. In point of information. Won't the record show she called me the most racist person she ever met in her life? And you know the people know because I say, Miss Fields, I don't know if you're racist, but you sure is Eric Mason. And you. then he called the mayor racist. So the, the actual allegation of racist, wouldn't it be fair for you to acknowledge and know that her and him call black folks racist in an and open and meeting. That's, that's where it started that's not at. not a point of information. Well, if whatever it is, there's some good facts. You're out of order, Mr. She Mr. out of order calling folks racist and misogynist and narcissistic, and you ain't checked them once. Orderly. Okay, well. Okay, and so, so that's, that's your last one. Okay. Are you going to leave, Mr. No, Mr. no, I would vote it I in. want you to um, say that for the record. So, Ms. Ms. Fields, you still have the floor, so do you want to continue? Well, I just don't know how any council person can vote for this, knowing that there's no basis for it, there's no city policy. Um, it, it's totally uh, cronyism, which is helping your friends, okay? Nepotism is helping your relatives benefit using taxpayer resources, which is illegal. Point of information. What's your point of information? Didn't I say we was on one property? One nine zero three nine three, and didn't I say on the record I had just met them people, and she calling them my friends and relatives? Check her for those attacks. You don't do it. You ain't saying and hearing what I'm saying. It's hard for a black man to be called a crook. Point of information and point of point of information. Ain't she calling this black man a crook? Illegal, and you condoning it? Man, I, I'm not a judge or a jury. I am. So she, if, if you feel like it's a personal attack, Ms. Fields, please should. refrain from any personal attack. But Mr. <coughs> May, you too, with the white folks and the this and the that. It's unacceptable. All you white folks is, ain't bad. She nasty. It. 
So, I'm so, about point back right, so, now, right, so now you're you're personal attacking and you're asking that it not be done to you. Is well, that what you're asking for me? Well, is good to the gander. Don't discriminate. Mr. Banks, okay. Mr. I don't like discrimination. Okay. Ms. Fields, um, you still have the floor if you want. You're right. I'd just like Thank to make sir. note of yeah. um, I gave a definition of, in general of cronyism and nepotism. I did not make any personal allegations. Okay, uh, I'm gonna wait till Councilman Garrett. Does he have to do with the camera or what? <laughs> hey, Garrett. I don't know. He's away from the camera. He's not. He's just away. Yeah. Is that what he's doing? He's using that one. He's not out here. Come on. I want you to hear this. <laughs> if we wait for council people to attend meetings, we'll be never getting that done. <coughs> okay. Now, there's a problem that I think may happen with all of these in general. Let's just talk about this one on 393. Let me refer to my notes here. <laughs> Now, selling this for a thousand dollars, and it's a nice brick home, Councilman May said, so it could be worth maybe fifty thousand. Mm. Fair market value. Mm. Now, if you sell a distressed home before market price, a sell price say for a thousand dollars, and that's forty-nine thousand dollars differential market, treated as a gift. That puts it in a 25% tax bracket and a tax liability of approximately $11,800 plus penalties and interest. Now, I don't know that, and these people may run into an insurance problem trying to get these places insured. I think there's a problem and it needs to be further investigated and and I, uh, I agree with postponement. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just trying to figure out why my colleagues are always up apprehensive when it comes to helping poor folks. It's like it's a major issue when it comes to poor folks. But when we get corporate welfare, which is tax abatement, to all these different corporations that come to the community, there's no problem. The people that elect you need help from time to time. I got an issue. People over in my ward, 82 to 90 years old, I feel they should live free after a certain age. Roof repair. On the order, Ms. Madam President. Can Ms. Fields pay attention to her and Gary having a different meeting? I'm Mr. Just Mays, you, you, you have been having different meetings. Please just let Mr. Davis continue. Did you try to call me out for talking to somebody two weeks ago? Just, yes, you no, did. It's on the record. Come on, so go ahead, Mr. Keep Davis. Keep meeting in order. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> the politics in this room is, is just... It, it, it's just out of order. People are hurting. We have Mr. Woods and them doing whatever they do and bless their heart for whatever they do. But people are actually dying still from the water and everything else. This is a real tragedy in this community because this leadership, which is supposed to be leadership, ain't doing nothing but politics. When they come to helping people, they had dollar houses. People now, land bank, you can't, t I know the policy of land bank. I bought houses. I bought a house across the street, nice house. But Four hundred and seventy some dollars pocket change out of my front pocket. They set their own price. Land bank didn't buy no house. It was gave to them through what? Foreclosure from the treasury. From the treasury. So it ain't like they buying property. We up here politics. To help somebody that lost their house on hardship, they need to have a way. But not only do they need a way, they need a way to rehab them houses. And we supposed to be the body like Councilman May said, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. But he absolutely correct. Why wouldn't we go out our way? When you tapping at them doors to let me in, I'm gonna set you free stuff, we need to stand up to our word. The politics of what's going on, on this table is hurting a lot of people. And yes, ma'am, I would stand up to say people do need help. I needed help at one time. But Land Bank is not no big real estate company here. That is a tragedy. They pulling down hardest hit fund that was intended for people to live in their houses. Who's sitting at this table saying how corrupt that is? And I, I don't have nothing against Michelle no more at the land base. But people need help. 
when Obama put that in place, it wasn't to tear down your house and demo, demo, demo. Where are you going to live? Right now, the news on, and I tell uh, uh, Suzanne now, wait a minute. How in the world are you going to get green space without tearing down somebody's houses? So you're absolutely right. We got to do something to keep people in their houses. This is the body that do it. Now, if you so heart, wholeheartedly with this new administration, I hope the Pope folks, I'm on politics the camera now, see what you're in for. You about to lose everything you got because the new zoning is zone green space. Dayton is zoned as an apple archer. How in the world are you going to have an apple archer without tearing down the folks' house? It is no help over there. I had a conversation yesterday with Miss Margaret at Habitat that's retiring. I said, Miss Margaret, please help me come up with a way that people pay down uh, just a down uh, a deposit on getting their roof done. Because federal and state funds it is not qualified. You gotta do what they say with their money. I'm willing to come up with a benefit that people But what I'm saying is this, y'all. At the end of the day, people do need help. We only have a problem when it comes to helping the poorest of the poor. We never have no issue when it comes to helping rich folks. Call tax abatement. And thank you for indulging. I'm no done. Problem, sir. Mr. Vera. Yeah, um, I agree with Committee referral to um legal in regards to these properties and had it receive an answer um, dealing with, well, I guess this property, we're only on one specifically, so I'll keep it relative, uh, to see the prices and where they came from. I know Mr. Mr. Mason brought these to us, uh, but I asked legal to, because Mr. Attorney Milhouse has stated in a meeting that he believed that our policy only applied to the first seven houses that we had um, taken in, and then Mr. Mays pointed out that the policy never specifically specified. So I had made that referral to a legal, and I haven't got it. So I guess since Steve uh, is the only person here for administration, uh, does the administration have any comment on the prices? No, he's the people right there. Well, I made it a uh, meal, meal house from. He didn't work on yeah, yeah, he didn't, he didn't work I'm on this. I'm where you can ask me. Yeah, so I, I don't, I, you had re-answered, but I remember she we said, had said. I ain't never said that. <laughs> you had, can ask me for the record, Mr. I said. The, yeah, just my point was the attorney that I have requested is specifically working on the house. I don't want to throw you under the bus. I know that you're, you're working on other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think, but to out. to the administration part, do you know if it was signed on on the last one that we sent over from the Burson approval? If that, was, if that was approved. In what one? If the mayor approved us sending over that we sent the Burson property. Point of information. That wasn't a sale. We Not don't need an approved uh, Jefferson. 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 Was That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's of Jefferson. Not a point of information. Mm -hmm. Do you know if that was approved? It's a help to a colleague. Mr. Mays, please. What well, do you have to tell her, please? Yeah, tell the white guy. Oh, God, do you have to tell her? Yeah, because I'm Jeanette. black and she white and you check me and let her get away with murder. Please, don't say anything. You know, that would have been debated, so I don't know for sure. You you did blurt out, but you guys come on. Mr. Mayor, have the floor. Do you, Madam Chair, to the to to see if do you know if the last property acquired from the land was properly transferred over before we decided to transfer more? I don't know if it was properly transferred, but I don't think that was the, the whole end of it. I think the plan yeah, needs to be done. Right. Yes, come back to council. Okay, so you said, what did she have her hand up? Have you got a mic? Do you get a chair? Mr. Guerra, I don't know that everything has gone to get signatures yet and some of them we haven't gotten back. Still got to come it, it would be uh, mostly Davina that would be able to answer that question. Okay. And then and then my other question is um, to the uh, guest administration as well uh, in regards to the prices of these houses do they how how did I, I guess Mr. May can answer as well but I also want to hear the administration side of how they think that the prices should be determined. Let me if Mr. May wants to answer that too, then I don't think he has. I appreciate your question, Mr. Garrett. Let me say this, Mr. Garrett. Those seven houses, the land bank had went and signed land contracts with those people illegally, premature, because for 15 or 20 years, we had never took property prior to it going to the land bank. This is a new project, a pilot. So when we took these seven initial properties, it caught the land bank up. They had to go back and knock on those people's doors and say, that land contract, we can't enforce. The city took the property. Some of them had signed for two or $3,000, which was about the amount of the back tax. 
Whatever that amount of back taxes was, the land bank had signed land contracts for payments of like 200 a month until they get it paid off. When we took the property, then I went and knocked on the door and said, hey, because they were mad. Some of them wanted to sue the land bank, the city. They were calling the city attorney's office, and I said, I'm going to try my best to get you a price lower than what the land bank is to avert any <coughs> lawsuits. And guess what they said? Okay, Councilman Mays. And that's where we're at now. And I've said that two or three times. What Miss Field says on the record, he's never told us any rationale on why he's setting these prices. That's not true when most folks say it. But with her, she's saying it as a lie because it's been said. And I'm telling you, it ain't cronyism, it ain't nepotism, because I don't even know some of these folks. They came to me, so let me finish, he asked me a question about the prices on them set. That's how these prices have been set, to avoid a lawsuit and keep it way under two, three thousand, or two thousand, or whatever it is, under what the land bank had signed land contracts on. Those land contracts should still be in the record. And I'm not going to argue about whether a house should transfer back for 3000 versus 1000 1710 West Home is one of them. And I'm telling you, we can prove it. And I'm telling you, I didn't know these people. They were nepotisms. They weren't cronyism. They were residents who me and the block club, it wasn't just me. The block club president is Sean Harrison. Liberty point of bail. Order. What's your point of order? He's using this. He asked yeah. me a question. You answered his question. <laughs> Let me ask it my way. You don't interrupt the administration and nobody <laughs> else. Mr. Do y'all hate the answer you're hearing on the record? Know. We want a thorough answer, and you and Miss okay. Fields, who didn't vote. I got the information. Thank, Thank you. you. And so, and if the and my other part was if the administration could put their comment into the housing crisis, because I would hate to see us go through all this work. And then it gets sent over to the administration. And they point of the information. What's your point of the yeah, the administration has been working with me through Lynette Phillips, who was assigned. Me from the council, point Lynette, point Lynette point Phillips point from point the administration, and Millhouse from the legal. Mr. Just Mays. so you know. It ain't oh, people in the Mr. Mays, just so you know. Why are y'all so scared to get information? Right. So did you realize that? Thank when you put a question on it, did you realize that it's probably 11 o'clock. So, point of information, <laughs> Mr. Guerra, are you aware that Suzanne Wilcox does have how we should be assessing these properties? And so, are you aware that she has any information that would answer all of these questions, she saying that she does not, th these questions. figures have nothing to do with she's their not, site? She's not available here today. I know. Because that was what I had been I wanting to see for these properties and actually get what they, they thought the estimate should be to make sure we're doing it. Properly, so that's why my request is to you to, to do it again to see if he could answer. Just like I say, we're going to do all this work and then see it. Point, point of information. Point of information. Do you realize the council decides that? That's our authority. Yeah, so could you ask that through? So, through the administration, do you want to make a substitute motion special affairs? I don't know. I guess the substitute. Where's this motion? To the next committee. Yeah. Let's make that request for information next committee. If you can have Ms. Wilcox here to explain some of the prices she makes. Thank you, sir. Ms. Um, Ms. Field, you have a minute and 40 seconds, ma'am. I'd like to say that the first property that I voted against that the council gave away for a certain price went to a nonprofit. But if I'm understanding what Mr. Griggs is saying, okay, is that we need to be careful because while the intent is to help poor people, if this isn't done correctly and the prices aren't set correctly, they may actually be assessed in IRS taxes, something like this first property, $11,000. How is that going to help this family? That this needs to be explored more and investigated, that's why I'm trying to get these postponed to go back to committee so we can get more information. Is that you want you are you saying that to me through the and if you just want them to know? 
I, I would like to ask Mr. Griggs, was that correct? And did I understand you correctly? Is that yes, what you, you were saying? Yes, you did. Okay, so, so for a family that's going to get a property for $1,000, what they don't know is they may later be obligated to pay the IRS if this price isn't set correctly, $1,000. So perhaps they wouldn't want this property for 1000 if they know the IRS is gonna be hot on their tail for an additional 11000 So I just think wow. if we actually want to help people, we should probably get more information on how this is going to work because that will not help people, especially <coughs> poor people. Point of information. Okay. Do you want your point of information to be answered by? Yes, sir. What I'm trying to figure out is if it is what's the formula? Is it speculation? He's gonna. Well, he's gonna. Well, he read something that's worth the 11000 So do you want to reread it for me? Yeah, I can reread it. And it's also from past experience dealing with taxes. And then you can do Okay. My note here is what I've written to myself. Regarding sale of distressed homes at below market prices. If the fair market value of this property on Hamilton is 50000 and the sale price is 1000 you up to thousand from fifty thousand, you come up with forty nine thousand differential treated as a gift. Twenty five percent that puts it in a twenty five percent tax bracket, mm -hmm. and the tax liability approximately eleven thousand eight hundred plus penalties. Point of information. Plus there interest. is a point of information that's being okay. responded to, and a second point of information here. Okay. Thank you. You had a point of information, Yes, ma'am. Let me tell you something. Every year over here, you can bring Wait a minute. Do you oh, want no, no, I don't have to go Do ahead. you want the floor? Yes. You can have the floor. I want the floor. You have, a, you, I didn't keep yours. I think you had like two minutes. You got That's two fine. minutes. That's fine. You're the only one mine, though. Thank you. Every year the city has people down there, no, in the city hall, that you could bring your taxes over here. It depends on how much you buy the property for. I done bought tons of property. And I know a lot of people buy a whole lot of property. And that, that out of space stuff, you must don't buy property. I own property. It don't work like that, ma'am. And then according to your neighborhood, you don't just, if you give me a house for a dollar, I guess what, my taxes is dirt cheap right now. But let me go and do, I, I can bring it up. But it's according to the environment of the neighborhood I'm located in. What kind of fantasy you in? Buy you some property. Quit renting, buy you some property. Thank you for indulging. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Madam Chair, let me say this. Um, it ain't a gift. When it sells, it sells for a thousand. In some real estate law, the selling price could be the market value, but you really take what prices and sold for in the area. So all these hypothetical, while Miss mm -hmm. Miss Fields is doing her thing, trying to influence the vote, she can influence some there. She can Santino, she can influence me. I don't care if it stay here as long as Jefferson. It can sit here on this council agenda for four years. I'm, this was created to get them and give them back because we don't want the liability. We don't want to get sued. We don't want to hold them as long as we should. And so Ms. Fields is hopping from nepotism to cronyism to me doing illegal activities and I try to latch on to something Mr. Grigg said about a gift and gift tax. That ain't a gift. Mm -hmm. It's sold for a smart cert. And that's the property. Now, it might be some truth to it. Y'all can postpone it two weeks. Don't postpone it five. Don't postpone it a month. Y'all can do what you want. But I'm telling you, every meeting y'all do this, do your homework. If Mr. Griggs done some, some homework, God bless him. Bring back. We'll check that out. If Ms. Fields want to do some homework on cronyism, nepotism, and illegal activity, go do it. You put me under oath now. I know them folks till I met them. Now, this is a mess. I'm going to see what five people do. Have I made a motion 
to send this to there's a motion on the floor to already. postpone it that's yes. by miss field yes. i'm gonna vote no on the motion to postpone the one property which is on home street which Thank is you. ready to go i'll be voting no to postpone it. so um this is my first time mr griggs wants to speak again but you guys we have beat this horse point of to order. death. Mr. What is your Griggs point of order? Spoke twice. He has not. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. You did a answered, point of information. He answered the well, question, Mr. Mayor. Don't get hostile. I well, can't I just, do that. I just, Why not just do that? Mm -hmm. We got to get You guys, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Well, I'm going to play in front of you. You talk about me like a dog. I'm a dog. You. I'm a politician. You, can't. you ain't fooling me and these people neither. Everybody talking to me about you. You guys, there is not one more thing we can say about this. You've either decided that you are going to say Point of order. Didn't you say it's Griggs while you talk? It's my turn. Didn't you say No. I said oh, I'm okay. speaking. Mr. Right. Mays, I want you to just stop bothering me. I'm going to use so my look, point of order and point of information. Point, point, of order, point of order, point of information. Yes, I did. I said point of order. He has spoke twice. You said he hadn't. Right. One was a point of information. I thought that you was calling on him and you were speaking. So I can point of order and say I and be wrong. You, you wrong 20 times. Don't tell me how to utilize my point of order and point of You're an abuse. You know what, Mr. Mays? I am over your abuse. And if you say I'm one more your thing abuse. out of line, I am ruling you out of this meeting. And okay. I have the authority to do it because point now you order. are disrupt. What point is your order. point of order? Why are you fussing at me? And you should because be talking. Because you interrupted point of order. me. You didn't do a point of I order. I did do a point of order. I'm doing one now. Why are you talking to me and fussing at me? And you should be talking. You said it was your turn, and, and we on a motion not to fuss and point your thing at me. Should I, I appeal your ruling to keep talking you. to me? I Quit did. talking to me and do your thing. Don't threaten me. This is not a meeting. This is a service. This feels bad. You do this every meeting. Bye. You guys, we have talked about these properties for two years. Bye. Two years. There's no reason why we should be having this. I, I'm not, I respect what you're saying because Suzanne Wilcox came here and said that these prices and Millhouse, if you look at the record, not what Mr. Mays is saying, but what Mr. Millhouse said, he said the only properties that he was aware of is the first eight. The second seven, he had nothing to do with. And, and half of these properties are a part of the second set. And so what I'm saying is, we know enough. By this time, we all know whether we're going to support it or not. And so I'm just hoping that we would move on and vote it up or down and wherever it's going. And so, Mr. Um, Briggs, you wanted to speak. You had another minute and 20 seconds. I really wanted to speak. Just it's the second round, though, Mr. Mays. My only concern is for the people that move into these homes. You know, I want them to see, see them happy, but I don't want to see them get into trouble with the IRS. And that's why I made this statement. I don't mind them moving into their homes. We've got too much rentals as it is in this city. But uh, I, I'm just worried about the residents. And I want them to be covered, you know? I, I don't know, you know, take them to it further. I, I don't know if we even have a CPA on on, on uh, employment, I don't know if we have one or not, but it's, it turns into a very, uh, very critical question, maybe through the legal department to some CPA to find out what 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 are the repercussions of doing this. So you Thanks. want that to be to the yeah, law yeah, firm as a yeah, referral? Yes, please. Thank you. you. Got that? Yeah, thank you. And so. Um, so the motion on the floor is to postpone it to the next committee meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, raise hands, please. Huh? Raise hands, please. Oh, all that are, um, opposed say aye. Opposed? I mean, um. <laughs> Give me a division of the house. She want to see who voted the division the by hand raise. The postponement say aye. 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 Those that oppose. It fails. So it fails. So, so Madam that, Chair, it's it's nice. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. Now, in light of what done happened, here, I don't know what Mr. Griggs and what Mr. Garrett are gonna do. 
But if people want to check out the tax structure and what people will pay if they buy a house for a thousand, I bought one for three thousand and live in it now. Mr. Mays, are you making a motion? I'm talking, I got the flow. Why are you interrupting me and I got the flow? The emotion on the floor. That's what your mind said. I didn't say it. So I wish you would quit abusing and discriminating against me when I talk. Treat me like you treat the white folks. Say nothing. I know you want it, they vote. Let me be me. I'm start, can I speak again without you talking to me, ignorant and you know condescending? What? I am what? not going to be in a meeting where there are no rules, you guys. Oh, there's there, some rules. There's you no breaking them He's constantly. I got the flow. Well, you, you get the floor to be, you can't have I debate. get the floor to discuss city business. Miss Galloway, you out of order. I'm warning you. This is your third days. warning. Will you, you remove you yourself from I'll that chair? Myself. I accept a okay, warning so from that's myself. your first one. Now let you me continue. It, and if you do it again, mm -hmm. remove yourself. Now I have to flow. I'm elected to discuss business on a program with housing. And we're talking about 1710 West Home. Now through you, whoever, Mr. Gill, if I, if I move this to council, if you going to move with it or against, because I ain't finna make no motion to lose that. Yeah. 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 Still still I don't like to see the person. You know, so I don't want to see them fail either. So this is what we got going. We can move it to council. And if you don't get your answer, I'll support moving it back to committee from council. But I don't want this to fail on a motion to council and then we got to wait 30 days. So I'm talking to you as the logical mind sitting here. I can do special affairs. Can you move I can do that. All right. All right. Um, but we are separated. So I'll make a motion to move 190393 to special affairs. There's a motion on the floor to move 190393 to special affairs. Mr. Mm -hmm. President? Should I support the motion? It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next one. Um, Madam Chair, I would move move one nine zero three nine four to special affairs. There's a motion to move one nine zero three nine four to special affairs, Mr. Garrett. I second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those that oppose. <coughs> Next one. Uh, Madam Chair, I would move one nine zero three nine five one 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 three West Hamilton to special affairs. One nine zero three nine five to special affairs. Is there a second? Okay. Mr. Garrett. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those that oppose? Next that, one. That second one that moved to special affairs for the record was 6722 Fleming Road. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I would move 1903968814 West Hobson to special 1 affairs. 190396, Mr. Greer. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those that oppose? Mr. Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would move one nine zero three nine seven to special affairs. There's That's a motion Laurel to move. Oak, 1901 Laurel Oak. One nine zero three nine seven. Is there a second, Mr. Garrett? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Ma Mr. Yeah. Briggs. Yeah. Uh, a constituent uh, called me about this 1901 Laurel Oak <coughs> Drive, and he lives in that same complex. And he's worried about whoever buys that. It's going to cost him a lot of money because the roof is about to cave in, mm -hmm. and it's in very, very bad condition. And uh, that's my only concern with this: that uh, it's not livable. Okay, that's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Griggs, Mr. Mays. Mr. Griggs, let me give you some information about 1901 okay. Royal Oak. Okay. The gentleman on the, if you're facing it, the gentleman on the right side, him and his wife, yeah. they put a new roof on theirs, and they have to do some work, an extra $1,500 on the roof on the one on ours. Mm -hmm. They've asked me to try to recoup that, but this council ain't even got to that business. The guy on the other side, he want to buy it, and I say he ain't got the option to buy it. He wants to buy it. So I know people on both sides. Didn't know him till we got it, then met him. He want to buy it. It ain't available for him. You go in there, 
is livable and looking good. The land bank put $10,000 into that property and was mad when we took it because they had put $10,000 prematurely. So whoever given you that information, have you ever been in there? I'll take you by there and you'll see how livable it is. Yeah, I've been in there. I've been mean, not in there, I've been by it. I know. I know right where it's at. I'll take you in there and meet the lady. It's livable. I'll trade it for mine. Maybe I could be an eighth ward and be the council person. I'd rather live in that condo than my house. My house is a little more raggedy than that condo. So somebody then gave Councilman Briggs the wrong information. Now, I'm not going to go over and say that no work need to be done on the roof, but it was some work done. The guy got the receipts. He want 1500 back. I thought he had a legitimate complaint because he did the roof, and the guy on the other side want to buy it. And I hope that ain't who you're hearing from. No. But I'm here to tell you, some of that information you said is wrong. I'm not saying all of it, but I don't know of a roof problem. I remember that roof, $1,500. And I know $10,000 is what the land bank told me they put in it. And I done been in it. And I done been in the one, I said, I didn't even know they was this big. And nice. They don't look that big. So, Mr. Griggs, I'm telling you and everybody else, if anybody want to learn about these properties and meet these people between now and special affairs, if I can assist you, let me know. I'm aware of the, of the 1500 because Mr. Mr. Griggs, you don't have the floor. Okay. Mr. Mays, are y'all done? I'll yield to Mr. Griggs. I just want people done? to be able to talk. Are you done, Mr. Mays? I'm never done. I remember the 1500 more than a year ago because it was affecting his roof, the next door neighbor That's on correct. the right. And uh, I agreed. I thought he should recoup it. But if the land bank put in 10000 <coughs> that means that it could be considered a gift of 9000 case. So whoever buys that could be responsible for taxes or uh, on $9,000 and they, they might not like that. I'm done. So any further discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. Mr. Griff, wouldn't they have already been responsible for that if you saying gift type of thing? But at the time it was owned by the land bank. And so if the land bank owned it and repaired it before we took it, it wasn't owned by the person, it's owned by the land bank at the time. And so those gifts would have been responsible in that instance, not to that person. The land bank picked up some property that it had, and then we took it. So I hear what you're saying, but I'm saying I don't know all of what you know. All I know is what I know. And so I received the information. If people can find out between now and special affairs, and if it's postponed back to committee from special affairs, I don't care if that process of postponing back happens, but if we can move it forward and people can find out what they want, I can assure you that policy don't <laughs> refer to just seven properties. And I can assure you, each one of these that I tell you had a land contract on it with a price certain, I can prove it. And so if I say it had one, now Fleming Road didn't, but Home Street, Laurel Oak, and I'll tell you which one, Hamilton did, I'll be voting to move this to special affairs. Thank you. And just for the record, Laurel Oak was the only one that was a lease and not a land contract. It was a lease for $850 a month. So the, the person was not buying, they were leasing, which would make sense for the land bank to include putting money in because they were going to still own the property. And, and I have the documentation inside of my office. It was the only one that is a lease. And so, Mr. Mays, I have the floor. You have exhausted your two times. I'm asking you not to interrupt me. And so I, too, received a call from a person on one side, but not saying that the person didn't want to buy the house and that they were interested in buying the house, that there was a leak in the house that was affecting their house. 
And so I guess somebody from legal or somebody is aware of that. But just for the record, this was the only one that was a lease, and the lease was for eight hundred and fifty dollars a month. What's your point of information, Mr. Mayor? You saying that somebody told you the lady who lived there say she didn't want to buy it? Yes, the person next door. No, I ain't, I'm talking about her. No, I didn't say oh, okay. that, Mr. Mays. I didn't say that. Well, she that. told me she wanted. Thank you, Ms. Well, sh I wouldn't do so that. She spent eight fifty. I, I would buy it too. Next door Mr. Mays, thank you. Point of information. I just wanted to know if she told. I didn't that. say she said that. She didn't. Why well, bring it up? So, all in favor of moving this to special affairs, say aye. 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 Those that opposed, any abstentions? So, is there a last one? Madam Chair, Mr. this is the last one on this agenda. It's 16 or 17, uh, but we baby stepping y'all. So this is the last one on this agenda. This is not the last property. I don't want people to get that confused. I would move 190398-1736 West Hobson to special One nine zero three nine eight. Council, Mr. Briggs. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I want the record to reflect that I want to transfer these properties back within 30 to 60 days in this pilot program. And the pilot program first was to prove that we could take them and intercept them. That was the main proof. We've done that. And then the second proof, President Winfrey, was to get them out of our hands quickly to avoid liability. Remember, we put $5,000 worth of insurance on our 80000 So I believe when you got people blocking, like Ms. Fields, Ms. Gallery, people coming up with stuff and they blocking, they trying to make something happen so they can say, see, now it's been a lawsuit. And guess who I'm going to blame? The no voters, the blockers who want to make this like it's a real real estate program and we got to get appraisals and appraise these people, know the true market value. We ain't got to do all that. You go pull in the assessment office, the assess value, and it's, you can double that and that's been for years how people come up with what might be the market value. So I want to pause here for the record to say on the record, if anybody catches any liability, blame the Galloways and the um, Kate Fields and the Worthings for blocking these transfers back. Because that was the idea at the beginning. To get them and transfer them, not to hold them in auger and create liability on the city. And so sometimes when people want a program to fail, they'll block it and hope something happens wrong so they can say, see, we never should have got it. No, see, y'all never should have held this up no longer than 30 to 60 days. That liability should be gone, and these deeds should be back in the <coughs> residents' hands, and it should be transferred. They should be off the hook with the land bank on illegal land contract, and you write one lease for 800, Mr. Greg. That lady was gonna be paying 800, 800, 800, 800. I'm like, do you want it? We gonna give it back to you because that's our policy, the right of first refusal. And so I don't care how it works. Mr. Winfrey, can I give you a quick example? At the beginning of this meeting, you said you and Ms. Galloway met with the auditor people. That's how we work. When I'm assigned a project and create a project, I didn't question what the auditors told y'all like that. But when it come to me, I'm discriminated again. No, we don't want to ask you questions. We want to ask the administration. We want to ask legal. Just ignore the council person who worked on it, who, 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 who pioneered it. But then when they meet on a project, Ms. Galloway and you with the audit, auditors talking proper. And the auditor said, and the auditors, when do we discriminate on which projects get assigned? If Mr. Davis, if you want to take an initiative on a project, where there's housing, where there's streets, where there's black, that's your project. The problem we got here with Ms. Galloway for, in particular, she want authority and want to work on stuff and then come in here. I'm giving reports, but when it comes to me, beg your pardon, Ms. Galloway, I'm giving you your second one. 
and I'm going to ask if I have to warn you a third time, you remove yourself. That's fair, because that's what you do with me. But you don't like it when folk talk bad about you, but you like it when Miss Fields talk bad about me, because you don't check her. You can go over your head, because you want her vote. Do you want her vote for something? And Mr. Griggs won't. I mean, Gary won't. That's the only way you can get what you want. You got to cater to them folks politically to put together five votes. Because some of us ain't buying it. And so I'm here to tell you, Ms. Galloway, when I work on a project for a year or two or three, give me the respect to answer questions that I know the answer to that Mr. Branch ain't worked on. Give me respect to answer questions I can answer questions to that Miss Attorney Reed ain't worked on. So I see your style, and I'm telling people how you is. You disrespectful to this black North End councilman, and it's a different treatment, and you treat me differently. You discriminate, and I'm telling you, you're losing. Thank you for your undivided attention because you're acting that way because I heard you mumbling under your breath to Mr. Davis. Maybe you're working on his vote too. Let me say this in closing. I done worked well from my first ward elected seat for years and I done got rid of people. And if you keep on, I'll be getting rid of you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to special affairs, say aye. 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 Those that oppose, any abstentions? It passes. Next aye. on our Mr. Um, President. I uh, to do one nine zero four five three to council. There's a motion on the floor to move one nine zero four five three to council. Is there a second? Yes, Mr. Garrett. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those that oppose, any abstentions? It passes. Mr. Guerra. There's a motion on the floor to move 190454 to council. Is there a second? second. Mr. Griggs is second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Now, what is this? A transfer of funds from what? Um, through you to Steve, to the water and sewer fund? It's from the water and sewer fund. It's just transferring to a um, wages account and fringes. To a what account? Wages account? How the, much is being transferred? 90000 or no, what's the total? 166 166 total? Yeah, 833. Beg your pardon, Mr. Wood. That's the total amount. No, it's actually 300. Oh, we got the finance, Her Majesty. <coughs> ah, hey, Ms. Lewis, if I may. Ms. Lewis, can you join us for a second? Take the big chair. Take the big chair. You know, I'm going to keep them off of you. I'm the only one, only one treat you bad. If anybody else treats you bad, I'm coming out like a pope. Let me say this for you this. How is the Water fund as it relates to the $7 million payment. I don't want to move money. I'm making it relevant even at 166000 in order to make sure. Because if we miss a $7 million payment, if some people take over our water fund, how are we looking on that? We ain't close to missing one. Have we got one in reserve waiting to spend if need be? Should we pay one in advance? Absolutely not. But we got it. Yes. Let our bank hold the money. Interest. And interest. So I'll be voting to move this as long as I know we ain't moving and doing money out the water fund that could put us in jeopardy of losing control over our revenues and receipts. Because, so, you know, I'm the finance chair. I have to look at finance. And I had to fight to get the emergency managers out. See, it was some council people here. And I can name them that let the emergency manager in. Me and Huey Newsom and others had to fight as financial people to get the emergency manager out. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure people know that. What you do when you hold a position is important. Now, I done had to change a lot of ordinances that the emergency manager left, but I don't think. Anybody can say who then amended or changed or introduced more ordinances than any council person in the nation. But I've sure did a lot of them. 
So that folks left here messed up with emergency <laughs> managers. You want me to name some names who left them messed up financially? <laughs> go, go ahead, um, Tamar. I think people know what I'm saying. No, I just wanted to note that if you look on the staff review that came from the DPW department, um, there's 166,000 that's coming from the 591, and there's 166,000 coming from the 590. So the water and sewer fund. And so, I have to admit, I didn't look at the staff review because okay. I'm here now and it's faster listening <laughs> to you. I believe you. I don't believe people who say they did more ordinances than any council people because it was probably some way back, you know, who yeah, had to right. do ordinances right. and had to do many of them because they were setting up the city. Right. I seen a couple ordinances, but I done did a lot. There's some people left the um Leak adjustment ordinance messed up. Some of them were sitting here with me. They gone. I, we fixed that. Some of them had left the May, I mean the shell on transferring property taxes over on um, fork. I had to fix that. We steady fixing what some council people had left messed up. And guess who was the finance chair when they come out of the emergency? I'm gonna check the record. We ran emergency managers out. It was some council people brought them in. That's why it behooves me while any council person can right. support folks who brings in emergency managers and then fight against council persons who act in a financial capacity to get them out. Thank you, Her Majesty. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I would like to know what was, oh, I'm sorry, did anyone else have any questions? Okay, so um, before for, for council, I would like to um, find out who, who these positions are funding because these, this money is being transferred for those, from those funds to fund some positions. Is that correct? I would like to know what positions those are. They're, they're Do we have somebody that's filling them? I'm sorry? They're listed on the water distribution system. I know what they are, Steve. I know what they are. But those positions were originally, according to the budget and when we were going through, any position that was not filled, it was taken away. Point of information. What's your point of Didn't you say you first didn't know what they was? No. Oh, I said I, I didn't. Did. No, I mean people. I know what, oh. I know the position. Oh. And the reason why is before we get into it. Point I'm of like, information. What is your point of information? Do they go through personnel to they be have hired? To be hired in order to be we hired. don't know the people yet. Right, but but where, why do we all of a sudden have positions open? It's been positions we had to find to get up to speed. We are Mr. Order. Mays, Mr. Mays, absolutely. You know what? These are my questions, not yours. And you they don't have my answers, though. That wasn't you, a, you know what, Mr. Mays? You don't know this. You're an You're an antagonist, and I can ask. I'm not order. Let you. me get back. You really are. I was trying and to help. And so my question, and the reason why I'm going to ask this question is because I want to to have a discussion to find out Rob Bensick, um, Suzanne Wilcox. And, and I think there's one more other person that has a clause in their contract as an appointed position that if their appointment is not still there, there is the opportunity to go down to a different, their old position. And so, and so I, right, as, as much as my colleagues point are okay, of what is your point of information? So really, you don't want to know what That's position, you do. just want to know That's if people That's who you might not agree with or hold positions in the administration have been funded to another. That's really what you have. No, my question is, why, why, this is a legitimate question, Mr. Mays, not for you, but for me. We're getting ready to move 300 thousand dollars is that right you're saying three hundred and almost twenty thousand right it's appropriate for me because these are That's two positions that add up to a hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars each and so it's appropriate to find out who, why are we getting those two positions because we have um contracts in place but what are they called um you guys know what Steve, I want you to stop. Um, Steve. These, these are positions that we are required to, to, under the administrative order from EPA right. to have a water distribution system supervisor in spot. I'm we clear about one. that, Steve. Well, that's one we haven't positions. had one. And so my question is, we are paying on a contract for certain positions to be maintained by an outside source. And so, Steve, Hold on. go ahead. I'm going to clarify. Okay, please. 
We're paying on a contract for F and B to run the water treatment plant. Correct. Check the contract. It has I nothing do. to do with the water distribution right, system. Right, Steve. But you bringing for a water distribution. I supervisor. understand that. Why is it? Why is it pertinent now? That uh, that order hasn't been new. Is it new? Maybe no, it's, it's not new. new. How old is it? It's 2016. Okay, so we're in 2000. What is your point of information? Whether it's old or new, <laughs> shouldn't we feel the mandate? It was 2016. My Point question is appropriate, Mr. Right. Mays. Right. When your turn comes, you can ask. If I'm going to vote on $320,000, I need to know why is it that this is coming before us? This is the last council meeting before an election. Why are we feeling it when it was open? Oh, 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 oh
I, 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 it is I what really, it is. I've got when it wrong, do us the wrong. I, don't, I, don't want, I didn't want to leave. I hoped I was hoping that we would be further along. Thank you. This stuff. But I've got to get back to work. I've got to. The investigation is going to show up in the next. Miss Galloway, the cat is out there. She don't want to vote for Wanda because of an election that tried to throw you out. They tried to throw me out. No wonder she want to throw me out for talking. No wonder they trying to discredit me because people know how I wrote. Ah, did you catch it? The cat is out the bag. Winston running Galloway. Winston running in legs. Oh, we should have an easy one. Yeah. It's gonna be they fun. Blew that one. Is it Halloween yet? I didn't hear anybody in Germany. They blew that one. Uh, no corn. They blew that one. It's gonna be real.